Hey what's up guys, welcome to part 6 of my how to make a Pokemon game tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to make events. I'm going to look at some basic event commands, and we're going to look at event triggers, how to make your events happen. So, without wasting any more time, let's get started. So, the first thing you want to do is make sure you're on the event layer. You know, you got all your terrain layers that we looked at before, but there's an event layer, which is where all the events are. So, you can just right click anywhere on the terrain and select new event. So this event window is where you're going to be spending most of your time when it comes to making a Pokemon game. I think, I don't know, maybe 50%? Maybe 40%, I don't know. I spent a ton of time here. So get familiar with this, and I'll help you familiarize yourself with it. So on the top left, you have the name of your event. The name isn't really too important. Like, if you have an important NPC, then it's good to give them a name. But if you just have an event on the ground that triggers something, it probably doesn't need to be named. I mean... I mean, it's up to you, really. If you want to keep track of it all, you can name it. Anyway, I'll name this one... Test Guy, because we are going to make a Test Guy. We're going to make an NPC. So, conditions. Um, I would say right now, since we're making super simple events, don't worry about these. If you want to make more complex events in the future, this will be very important. Basically, this will determine if your event happens or not. But if you ignore all of these boxes, your event will always happen. So we want our NPC to always be there, so we can just leave these alone right now. Graphic controls the uh, the picture of your event, which we, we we probably already know that, but let's make him a chef. Test guy is the chef. Next to that you see autonomous movement. That basically means, does your event move? Fixed means, no, it doesn't move. Random means, yeah, it moves, and I have no idea where it's going to move because it's moving at random. Approach means it will always move towards the player. I stay away from approach. I would say don't use it. If you want to make something that like stalks your dude, you can do that, but this is kind of weird. I would, s I would say stay away from approach. Custom is you can set the movement path for your guy. So you can be like, set move route. Whoa, look at all these commands. See, some of these are really awesome. Some of these you probably don't need to use, and a lot of these are going to be really confusing right now. But in the top left right here, you have the most basic ones. You can move them down, you can move them left, you can move them right, you can move them up. But let's just make our guy random right now, to make him super simple. A super simple NPC. So underneath that, there's speed and frequency. Speed is basically how fast he moves, like how fast is a footstep for him? Like, is, it, is he at like a normal pace, like walking pretty leisurely, or is he like sprinting like a madman? And then frequency determines how often he takes a footstep. So speed is how fast one footstep is, Frequency is how often he footsteps, or how often he takes a step. And then underneath that are really important ones. You got, oh, excuse me, you got options and triggers. Options, such as like move animation, stop animation. Move animation means when he moves, it'll play an animation. Or when he like turns or whatever. Um, stop animation, I'm pretty sure that means it'll play the animation even if he stopped. Direction fix means he will always be facing the direction that he set initially. So if I have him facing down, or left, or right, or up, he will always be facing that direction if direction fix is on. Through means you can walk right through him. It's really interesting. Um, through is super, super important if you're making a really complicated event or if you're making a cutscene. If you want one event to move, like if you set a move route for one event, and that event crosses over another event, the event on the bottom has to be set to through. It has to be. Otherwise your otherwise your event will get like stuck and it'll get jammed up and you'll be all weirded out. It took me forever to learn this. I'm passing this knowledge off to you. I'm going to go over this again in a future episode where I talk about making cutscenes cuz it's super important. And then always on top means they'll always be on the top layer. They'll they'll appear on top of everything. And then trigger. Oh man. So trigger super important. This basically means, how do you trigger your event? Duh. Um, so action button means you just press the action button and you talk to him, you know, like a normal NPC or a sign or whatever, you interact with him. Player touch means just simply bumping into him will trigger him. Event touch means basically the same thing, bumping into him will trigger him, but event touch can be more complicated and used when you're using one event to move another event into something. Basically, it's used a lot in cutscenes, or forced things. And then auto-run means it'll always happen. No matter what, it'll always happen. Which is pretty bad. 
what what I mean by always happen is even if you're not talking to this guy, if you're on the same map as this guy, you'll, he, his his event logic will constantly spew out. So if he's an NPC where you just talk to him and he says hi, he'll keep saying hi. If you forget to turn off, like if you if you make it so that way there's no turn off and you have auto run set, he'll keep saying hi forever. It's really bad. I can show you. <laughs> it's just so bad. And then parallel process is basically the same thing as auto run, but you can do things while it's processing its event. Like other things can be happening while it's doing its thing, if that makes sense. So we'll just set this to action button because he's an NPC. We want to talk to him. And then what's he going to say? We want him. We want him to be talked to. So in our event commands, this is this is where we're getting into the real good stuff now. Like this is some of the most important stuff. Right click. Insert, and look at all these. There are three pages. There are three pages of event commands. But don't worry, most of these you don't actually use. Some of these are super important. Some of these are pretty complicated. But some of these you don't even have to worry about at all. Like the third page. Honestly, I use like two of these. I only use like two of them on the third page. So that right there is already like a, a weight off your mind. I don't use like anything over here. Like, from control timer down to change party member, I don't use at all. So there's a lot of stuff you don't have to worry about, so... Don't worry. Okay. So, let's do something really simple. Show text. Basically what that does is it shows a line of text. So we can make it so that way when you talk to him, he says... Hey there! I'm a chef! I don't know why I gave him a Texan accent or whatever when he was like, Hi there! Howdy! Okay, so let's move him over here. And he moves around at random. Cool. Let's talk to... Uh, let's talk to our chef here. Okay. Cool. So let's see. He's going to move around at random. And his frequency is set pretty low. If we set the frequency higher, he'll take footsteps faster. And his speed is set to a pretty good speed. That looks that looks a pretty organic. Right? So let's talk to him. Hey there, I'm a chef. Cool. So you'll notice that the text right now when I'm talking to him is a black text. If you want to change the color of your text, there's ways to change it to blue, to red, to yellow, to purple, to green. You can go with so many colors. Right now, the easiest thing to do is forward slash, which is in the top right above your enter key if you're if you have my keyboard. <laughs> but just forward slash B, lowercase b. You can just put that right in front of your text, and it will change his text to blue. And then you can do forward slash R to change it to red. And then there's other more complicated commands that you can go into. I'll link it in the description below. You can make your text green, purple, like I already said this, but you can you can get some crazy colors. But yeah, he's blue now. Nice. So let's look at some more complicated things. Let's look at choices. Show choices. So what show choices does is it prompts you with a couple choices. You can start off with just two choices, real, make it real basic. You can have up to four. Um, I wish I knew... It would have been super helpful when I was making um, Pokemon Paradox if I had the option to prompt for more, because... Oh man, I, I had a super complicated event due to this limit. I believe there is some other way... Like I think with Branch there is a way to make it so you have more choices, but I'm going to make it super simple right now. We're going to make it two choices. Yes and no. Actually, no. Let's make them... Uh, let's make them... Yes, please, and no, thank you. So, when you when cancel, this thing on the right here, when cancel means if you talk to him, and then you press X or B, or whatever the cancel button is, what choice does it default to? So, disallow just means it automatically kicks you out. Like, it doesn't choose any choice. But I like doing it so that way there's basically a yes and a no, and if you press B, it defaults to no. So when you hit yes, then let's just show text. Yes, please. So if you choose yes, it'll say, you chose yes, in all caps, screaming at you, you chose yes. And if you choose no, it'll say, you chose no. Cool. So basically right now all we're doing is showing choices and text. Really simple stuff. Hey there, I'm a chef. Yes. You chose yes. Hey there, I'm a chef. You chose no. 
Cool. That's so easy, right? So we made our random NPC who walks around and talks to you. So that's a simple event. So you can you can do that without even making an NPC, honestly. Like you can just set an event on the ground here where every time you on player touch, um, every time you step on it, it'll show the text. You stepped on me. Cool. So this might be weird. Let me let me test this. So every time you take a step on it, it'll say you stepped on me. You stepped on me. You stepped on me. So you can use that, you can use triggers on the floor to like start cutscenes and, you know, force events. Like you can do some really crazy stuff. Like, um, so let's start looking at the event commands a little bit more. So there are some event commands that are super complicated and I'm going to have to save those for a future episode, but there are some that are so simple. I'll talk about them now. Like, uh, wait. Wait. So I don't use input number. I don't use change text options. I don't use button input processing. I do use wait. What wait does is it it just it just waits. So if you want to make a cutscene and you want the timing to be good, like uh, let's change our you stepped on me guy. Oh shoot, I got rid of him. Oh well, he's super easy to remake. Show text. He'll say you stepped on me. And then let's make it wait 20 frames. So you can tweak this amount all you want to make the timing just right. It's 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 kind of hard to finesse it and make the timing just right. But He'll say, hey, you stepped on me. And then we'll, he'll wait a little bit, and then he'll say, you jerk. So let's see. Let's see how this looks. So wait. <laughs> it's one of the simplest events there is. Or one of the most simplest commands there is. Okay, so. Let's see, this one? Oh, I, I didn't set it to player touch. See, that already is a problem. Player touch. Always be mindful of your event triggers. Always be mindful of your event triggers. Okay, let's step on this guy and make him mad. Hey, you stepped on me! You jerk! See, that was that was 20 frames of wait. You stepped on me! You jerk! I don't know exactly what the time... I mean, what the second to frame ratio is. Let's see. One Mississippi, two... It's like... It might be 16 frames as a second in, in the Pokemon game. I might be wrong, because, you know, typically you want to have games running at 30. I mean, <laughs> oh my god. 60, not 30. What do you think I am, some kind of pleb? Okay. So, um, let's uh, delete this event, and let's modify our chef to make him a little more complicated, shall we? We got, we got some more time to make this guy a little more, a little more spicy. Let's make this event spicy. So, <clears throat> comment. Comments, basically... Um, are for... they don't do anything in-game, but they're for you to keep track of your events. So, you could say like, hey, this choice selects... ASD, ASD, ASD. So basically, this is just for you to keep track of your events. Because, uh, trust me, sometimes your events will get so complicated you'll forget what you were even doing. Like, I've had events that split in 12 different directions, and it totally, totally would drive you mad if you didn't have comments. But for simple stuff, you don't need comments. Okay, so let's do right click insert. So conditional branch is actually my favorite event command of all time. I love it. It's my favorite. But it's so complicated, I'm going to have to save it for next episode. But what I can talk about is switches up here in the top right. So this stuff in the, the stuff in the bottom left is kind of more complicated. So let's go to the top right. Control switches, variables, self switches. These three are the bread and butter of your game. These things are so important, they're the bread and butter, honestly. Control timer, that's not important. Anything from control timer down, not important. Screw that stuff. Switches, variables, and self-switches. Um, since they're all decently complicated on their own rights, I'll just talk about switches right now. Switches are like light switches, you know, they can be on or they can be off. There's only two possible states. A switch is either on or it's off. And at the very start of your game, a switch is by default off and then you can choose to set it on so that's where the control switch command comes in so if you want to set it you use control switches and I can I can I have to, oh yeah I already made my own switch cool so it starts you off here and you're looking at all these other switches that are already made these are switches that come with Pokemon essentials by default and I would recommend not not modifying too much of these actually I'm not I would recommend not modifying them at all 
but you can go down, switch pages here, and make your own switch. You can actually do change max also. Right now it's at a maximum of 100. You can make it 500. You can go like 999, I think. Um, yeah, you can have a ton of switches. A ton. You have so much freedom, honestly. So let's just make our own switch named Test Switch. If you want to make your own switch, you can just click on it and then enter in the name and boom, you made a switch. So let's change Test Switch to On. So when you talk to him, let's do this actually. When you talk to him and you choose Yes, it turns Test Switch On. If you talk to him and you choose No, it turns Test Switch Off. So remember, Test Switch is by default off, but setting it off doesn't really matter. It doesn't doesn't really uh if it's already off and then you set it off it won't turn it on if that makes sense right so it's default off if i hit no it'll stay off if i hit yes it'll turn on then if i hit no again it'll turn off cool okay so check this out you can actually look at all of your switches by by entering uh the debug menu in in game by pressing f9 since we're in editor mode remember so we can go to switches we can look down Test switch is off right now. Hey there, I'm a chef. Yes, you chose yes. Cool. So now, test switch is on. Nice. So, I'll talk about conditional branches, and I'll talk about um, what else was I gonna talk about? I'll talk about event conditions. That's what it was. I'll talk about event conditions because event conditions use switches. If something is on. Um, I'll talk about variables, I'll talk about switches, and I'll talk about self-switches. Self-switches, oh, I love self-switches. And I'll talk about conditional branch in the next episode. Uh, if this episode was helpful, let me know. Uh, you know, subscribe or comment or, uh, give me a little heart <laughs> if you liked it. If, and if it wasn't helpful, let me know why. Um, I hope to expand upon this series much, much, much more in the future. Because there's so much still to cover, you have no idea, honestly. And um, I think what I'm going to do, here's my plan right now. My plan is cover a lot of the basics right now, because events are honestly the most important thing. I mean, scripts are really important too, but um, unless your dream is super ambitious with the Pokemon game, you can kind of avoid going into scripts for now. But um, yeah, so my plan is this. Make, um, first cover all the basics and then start covering a whole bunch of specific stuff. So maybe for the first 10 episodes, I mean, we're on episode six right now. Um, for the first 10 or so episodes, keep it basic, but then I'll start going into requests. So leave requests down there, you know, like say, hey, I wanna know how to make my own Pokemon. That's a really good one that I'm definitely, definitely, definitely gonna do in the future. You know, like say, hey, I wanna know how to make an item that works like an HM, like a flashlight that works like Flash. I already know how to do that, and I'm going to teach you how to do that very soon. Um, yeah. Um, so that's my plan right now. So very, very soon, I'll start answering requests and be the guy that teaches you how to do everything you ever wanted for your Pokemon game. For life, uh, can't help you with that. <laughs> but for Pokemon, this is the right place to be. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, I'll see you next time. See you guys.